In this video, I will provide you with a couple of methods that can be used to extend the ceiling height, um, raise the walls. And a couple of these I have done before. The only one that I haven't done before would be the beam, just putting a beam on top of a wall. So I have done the um, one that we see over here, or you'll see later on in the video where we raise the wall with two by fours and then put some stabilizing posts in there. So let's go ahead and get started. Our beam here, we have a beam and then a wall. You just build a wall on top like this, you're going to have a hinge point. I'll put a link in here to explain more about that. But a hinge point is basically um, like a door hinge. You know, if you have a beam and you set it on top of a wall, you can see where it can actually lean over if there was enough pressure, if there aren't some, if there wasn't some type of a strap or something to prevent it from actually turning over. So here are a few straps, they're four foot on center. And again, this is the method I have not seen done um, used before. Just thought I would throw it out there. It seems like this one here would work just as well as the other one, if not better. Um, because you're not going to have uh, multiple spots where it can separate. Remember, you can separate, the walls can separate um, during a hurricane at, the, at any connection point that is weak. So the same would kind of hold true if there was enough pressure on something. If you were just to, um, let's say, strap the wall to this top plate, well, what would, what would prevent the top plate from turning with the beam? And if you strapped it to the two top plates, what would prevent it from separating from the wall framing stud? I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I understand. So here's an example of having a strap um, connected to the each one of the studs. And you can see where this idea right here, once you put it on both sides, the wall isn't going to move. It's not going to move this way um, because of this strap and it's not going to come towards us because of the strap on the back. The next suggestion would be to use a beam supported by a post at each end. And of course you might need a concrete pad or footing at the bottom of this because you're now creating a concentrated load. And here we can see where the post is supporting the beam at each end, you can always add something in the center. Um, a lot of times if you have a post at each end, the beam's going to need to be larger. So sometimes you can pour multiple concrete pads and make the beam a little smaller. But something like this is also going to provide you with more support to stabilize the wall also. So next up on the list, a post at each end. And of course this idea here um, isn't going to stabilize the center. You're still going to have a hinge point in the center, which of course could be eliminating by adding straps. And in this example, we're going to add shear panel or uh, plywood or OSB on the outside to stabilize this side. And the straps, of course, will prevent the other side from moving. And again, you can add a strap to each one of these, and that might actually be what your engineer is going to require. I've seen this done before where they add straps. Um, I've seen pictures of it. The only ones, the only time I've ever done this, we've needed to use stabilizing boards every four foot on center. And that, of course, is what we're looking at here. Now, the one, the project that I did, and I only did this once, we used two by fours. We didn't use four by four. So every four foot, we cut a two by four and we put it next to a wall framing stud. So we used an existing wall framing stud. Keep in mind, there was stucco on the exterior. So if you have stucco and siding on the exterior, you're going to need to take the drywall or plaster off of the interior and then cut a notch in the framing plate and then put these stabilizing boards in. So I think if I'm if I was going to do it today, I would use a four by four. Uh, you're going to spend a little more money, but it's not going to be that much more money. And it's probably going to uh, um, stabilize it a lot better. And I'm sure that makes sense. The board four by four is going to be a lot stronger than a two by four. So again, notch the plates and then put the stabilizing boards in. And you might not need a board 
stabilizing board in the corner because you're going to have the other wall. So if you're using a, if you're raising the wall on the other side, that's going to stabilize the corner. But you are going to need them on the inside. And of course the spacing, I will leave that up to you. Like I said, the one time I did this, we used two by fours, nailed them next to the existing framing studs and spaced them 48 inches on center. And of course you are going to need straps and I would imagine, um, I know this is overkill, but something like this might require an MST 48, which is a monster strap. I just drew a small one in there. So stabilizing post to stabilize the wall, get rid of the hinge point, and straps to tie everything together.